Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, today we're going to be talking about universal design for learning, backwards design to develop, and the thematic units aligned with um, Iowa Core. And these are a number of, of the things that we're looking to approach. <clears throat> I am assuming that you've already read the RWLD, watched the videos, and done that sort of thing, because that's a, a really important way to to um, provide a premise or a foundation for what we're going to be doing in these talks. Please make sure you do that in the future, but I'm sure you've already done it. <clears throat> now, so what is learning? That's an interesting question. Stop for a moment, maybe stop this video, and think about it. What is learning? Okay, a lot of times people will say learning is memorizing stuff, remembering things so I can use it someplace else. But there's more to it than that. It's a process that leads to change. Now, usually when we talk about that, it, it, uh, if you talk about memorization, sometimes you can take what you have and apply it to other things. But usually it has to do with how are you going to actually apply it? Now, usually in, in education, we talk about um, knowledge, skills, and dispositions. Knowledge being things that you know, skills being things you can do, and dispositions being how you feel about it. So it's a process that leads to change. And we often have to identify that using verbs as, so we can actually see what it is that they've done. Now, here's something I want to point out. Very important. If you have a, a, your cell phone there, pull it out. Um, if it's an iPhone, you, there's a little podcast uh, app on it that came with it. And depending on what you have for the Androids, uh, you can get um, podcast apps. Now, this is, a, um, this is uh, Vicki Davis, and she has the, is the writer of The Cool Cat Teacher. She's a high school business teacher, and believe it or not, this Cool Cat Teacher is the most heavily read blog on the planet, you know, as far as education goes. Um, and what she also has is the 10-minute podcast, a 10-minute teacher podcast. Um, and what I just heard today, and I, I would strongly suggest that you search for it and get the 10-minute teacher podcast on your on your phone. Remember, I mean, it takes 10 minutes to walk across campus. Wouldn't it be great to be listening to new ideas and things like that that are coming from these interviews? She has over 500 interviews with, with important educators, and it's a great way for you to learn without having to sit down and read a book or something like that. This is one that just I just heard it this morning, and it talks about um, teen genius. And this uh, student is saying she's a 13-year-old, and she is saying that um, I learned nothing from lecture. Now, I want to point out that I understand the irony that I'm lecturing to you about how she learned nothing about lecture. But the rest of our class has a lot of hands-on work. Um, what she did is when she was 11 years old, sixth grade, she's in a STEM school. When she was 11 years old, she saw that a lot of people were drinking water that had lead in them, but they had no way to test it. So she actually developed a way in which you could do that. And she was working with her engineering teacher, her chemistry teacher, and her science teacher, and they were working on, on how to, um, to put this together, and she created it. In fact, she created it when she was 11. So here's somebody who really learned. I mean, it wasn't about memorizing and things like that. She had an idea, she applied it, and now she's created something that's going to change the world. So take a look at that. These are good things to know about. So when we talk about uh, this process that leads to change, the only way you can measure that is through behavior. What is it that the students can do now that they couldn't do before? So what is teaching? Based upon if, if learning is the process of change, the idea of uh, changing in a behavior, what is teaching? Stop. Think about it for a moment. Well, some people think teaching uh, has to do with just memorization. What would you come up with? Well, teaching actually is the process of creating an environment where learning can occur. Doesn't mean you even have to be in the room. Uh, right now, I'm creating something where I'm sharing something with you. I'm not in the room, but it's something you can, you can pick up from. Uh, you could be writing a book. You could be creating a, a learning environment of some sort. But that's teaching. It doesn't have to be something where they're lecturing and trying to get you to memorize things. Uh, it could involve doing some lecturing. It could also involve reading. It could involve doing stuff. And then also maybe um, actually applying it, like in a, uh, a radio station, or maybe going out and planning something. In other words, these are really um, active processes. So the idea is that you want something that's teacher-led or teacher-guided um, and student-driven, something where the students actually do the work 
to, to show or to, to get engaged in it and to show what they understand. So when it comes to learning, we want to maximize learning for all. Now, you've done the UDL and uh, or the um, RWLD, and it talked about universal design for learning. Um, here, when we talk about curb ramps, the um, American Disabilities Act actually identified curb ramps, believe it or not, as being required. So how do you, why did they have that? They had it so that when people were on uh, wheel, um, wheelchairs, that they could actually go up and down from uh, and cross streets. But beyond that, there's so many other things. I mean, there's baby buggies, there's bikes, there's skateboards, there's um, uh, what, whatever. I mean, you could also, if you just don't want to step up, uh, these are all ways in which you're going to be using the curb ramps. You don't have a disability, but it is something that makes your life better. Now, in taking a look at um, the UDL at a glance, I'm assuming that you watched this five-minute video. In watching this five-minute video, that um, some things really connected to you. What was it that cried out to you that you said, oh, hey, yeah, that makes sense to me? Stop the, the video for a moment. Think about it. Okay, so one of the things that came out, I think that's important in that video, is that they talked about three different aspects of the brain and how learning actually needs to address all three of these. First of all is recognition. You know, how are things introduced? What, I mean, is it done through visual? Is it audio? What, what are the ways in which people are learning? Secondly, we talk about skills and strategies. Now, skills and strategies is something, how are we going to be using them? I mean, are, am I going to try to just do it all on paper? Am I going to be using, uh, you know, creating things? I mean, how am I going to be using the materials that I recognized and then um, uh, learned? And finally, caring and prioritizing. You know, why do I really care about this? What's important about it? How am I going to apply it in a life, in a world that's real? You're going to be using these materials in your teaching. So you have to pay attention to it and it has to, you have to care about that. So that's the representation and recognition the action and expression, and the engagement as to why is it I want to do this. So, instructional design. We talk about instructional design. What is that? Well, it's when we design instruction. But, you know, it's not quite that easy. It isn't just saying, well, we're going to have them read a book and then have them do this test and then it's all done. You really have to take a look at some very important parts. There's, so there's four aspects to components of, of instructional design. First of all is who are your learners? You know, are, are they old or the young, whatever they may be. What is the content that you want them to learn? That's identified by the Iowa Core and the standards you're using. Uh, what's the process that you want to use for learning? And what is it you expect them to be able to do to make this happen? Well, you know, the important thing is, how do you know? How do you know needs to be put up before you figure out how you're going to teach them? If you're going to be, uh, if you have a conversational Spanish class, you're not going to give them a written test. What you need to do is you need to know that the way in which you're going to test it is you're going to orally test them and see how well they can speak. So in other words, how do you know needs to be moved up? So in other words, who are they? What is it you want them to do? How are you going to test them? And then figure out the way in which you're going to teach them so that they'll do best on, on, that, on that exam or on that test. And once again, it's not necessarily a written test, but it's a test that allows them to demonstrate that they have acquired the behavior that you had hoped. So who are your learners? A lot of things you need to think about. How old are they? What kind of skill level do they have? What are their interests? It's always great if they're using your interests to help, um, to help with their teaching. What's the background of your students? Um, are they rural? Are they urban? Or, you know, what, are, what are the things that uh, they need, you need to think about with their background? What kind of diversity? When you have a diverse population, there's a lot of different ways in which you need to approach content. And special needs. What students have special needs that are, go that are going to, um, that you can address? Uh, what are the content, you know, what is it that you're going to be teaching? Now, the most important thing to think about, or a very important thing to think about, is that when you teach, it's the Iowa core that's going to identify what it is that you're going to teach. In other words, at fourth grade, these are certain skills that you, your students are expected to have. Um, basically, we talk about math, literacy, science, and social studies. Now, math, those are the four areas that, that we say that in your group for your thematic unit, that each uh, of those areas needs to be covered. If you have a group of three, you don't have to do all four of them. And then we have the 21st century um, skills. But there's a lot of parts that are missing here. What's missing? Well, take a look at it. 
uh, fine arts, computer science, PE and health, and, uh, world languages, family consumer science. All of these things were not in there at the beginning, but Iowa Core has grown. Let's go over and take a look. And you can go over to iowacore.gov if you want, and you could do a little bit of exploring yourself. So here are the, the main, we talk about literacy, mathematics, science, and social studies. And then down here, these are the other method, other standards that have just been um, uh, introduced, the computer science, fine arts, PE, and health. If we click on this, it'll take us over to a page where they have the fine art. Now here for fine arts, they talk about not just art, they talk about dance and media and music and theater and visual arts and even arts at the early childhood level. Um, if we take a look up here, they also have computer science. They have, um, this talks about the different levels uh, at which these standards need to be addressed. Um, we talk about fine arts, we talk about literacy, mathematics, here's the PE and health education. So there's a variety of uh, resources that you want to use here to identify the standards that you want your students to be able to accomplish. So let's take a look at the Iowa Core Standards. Let's go back here and it says the Iowa Core Standards. I'll click on that and over here we can identify the grade level that we want to follow. Okay, so if we go into grade, let's go to fourth grade and let's take a look at say science. And under science, we can go in and you'll notice they have physical science, life science, earth science, and space sciences, and engineering technology and applications. Let's go into physical science. So we go to physical science, it talks about energy and waves and their applications and technology. Let's take a look at energy. And under energy, it says use evidence to construct an explanation relating to the speed of an object to the energy of that object. So in other words, this is something you would want students to be able to um, show that they understand that. Now you could do this on a written test, but it makes a whole lot more fun if you have them shooting things around in the classroom and that sort of thing. But this is the outcome that you want your students to be able to, to prove. In other words, as a teacher, you can say, yes, indeed, they passed this, um, this standard. Make observations to provide evidence that energy can be transferred from place to place by sound, light, heavy, uh, heat, and electric currents. So in other words, once again, you have projects that they're going to do to show that that is going to happen. So in other words, this is what we do is we identify what are the standards that we want them to be able to demonstrate, and <clears throat> then we teach in that appropriate manner. So So here's some other standards, it's the ISTE standards. I'm just going to talk about them overall because we'll get, be getting into them much more later on. This talks about digital citizenship, knowledge constructor, innovative designer, computational thinker, creative communicator, global collaborator, and empowered learner. These are all aspects of technology, and, but it isn't just about technology, it's about how uh, learners are using technology to support their, their learning. So how do you know? Well, it's not about tests. In other words, when we talk about that outcome, that behavior change, we, it isn't about tests. You don't give them a test. What you may want to do is you may want to have them demonstrate something on a test. We have assessments. Assessments can be done with a, a test. You align whatever that assessment is with an outcome. Once again, if you're teaching um, conversational Spanish, you're not going to give them a written test. You're going to give them an oral test to see how well they can speak. Um, it needs to be something observable. You can't just say that students understand how to conjugate a verb. They need to demonstrate that. They understand how to ask somebody um, where, where they could go buy a hot dog. They need to demonstrate that. And we actually have, uh, when we talk about observable ver verbs, uh, if you click out and you go to that uh, address, the Blooms 249, it's going to take you out and show you 
um, Bloom's taxonomy, and when we talk about, and we'll be talking more about the Bloom's taxonomy next week, but and if, if you're talking about, do you want them to be able to analyze it? Well, these are the observable verbs. You want them to be able to um, contrast two things, or connect two things, or correlate two things. Do you want them to be show creation? They could design things, they could do role playing, they could rewrite. If you want them just to memorize, you could tell them to define or identify or describe or tell something about it. So in other words, these are the kinds of verbs you use. You notice that understand isn't there anywhere because you can't observe understanding. You can observe somebody explaining something. You want to make sure that it's measurable and you want to make sure that it's appropriate. In other words, these are the, the aspects you want to take a look at. How are you going to assess? You're going to assess to make sure that it aligns with outcomes, that it, you're using observable verbs, that you can measure what you expect the behavior is that they're going to do, and that it's appropriate to what you want to test. So, the how, what, what is the process? Well, here's the deal, how. Um, what is it you're going to teach? What will they learn? And then what kind of processes, in other words, what kind of steps are they going to go through? Uh, the components of um, how do you know? <clears throat> we want to take a look at how, what is the, the behavior that they're going to have to show what they know. Now this is used, it's kind of a backwards design, and it's um, understanding by design. The idea is you identify what the desired results are, you determine what you're going to be have them do, and then you plan how you're going to do it. In other words, that, that's exactly what we've been talking about. Um, there's a video on, on the RWLD that explains this, and take a look at that. Review the video and see how you would do this. Now, take a look at your, for yourself as to how you would go about doing that. Um, stop the uh, video for just a few moments and identify a grade level. Go to the Iowa core and identify what it is you, th you would like to teach. Then come up with some ideas as to how you will know. In other words, what is it you want them to be able to do? And often that's included in the, in the Iowa standard. And then how are you going to go about teaching it? Now, obviously, you don't, you're, in many cases, you're a brand new uh, teacher education student, so you may not know all of these capabilities, you know, these processes. But um, give it a shot. How would you go about teaching something like that? And like I said, spend three or four minutes thinking about this. Stop the video and actually apply it. One of the things that you can do is you can use, these are some of the outcomes you can use. You can um, identify three types of corn. You can summarize the events in Hamlet. You can apply the Pythagorean theorem to an engineering problem. You can categorize a group of animals by species. You can choose, you can write. These are the um, behavioral terms that you would be using when you're putting this together. So give it a shot. TPAC is something we've talked about in class. Um, so finally, with the thematic unit, we're looking at um, first of all, identifying the context, uh, what grade level are you going to be using, what are the subjects you're going to be teaching, and what kind of environment are they going to be in. And then we talk about the learner's characteristics. We have the diversity, the special needs, the competencies. And what you're going to be asked to do is you're going to be asked to identify the standards that you're going to address, the outcome that you expect to have happen, and then what are you going to be doing in the class. Now, don't, jump, don't worry about this right now because it's something that's going to be part of the process you're going to be using as you develop your thematic unit. It could look very much like this, where um, in science we're talking about uh, this is the standard you're addressing for molecules, structures, and processes. The outcome that you want you know, says that they design an experiment that measures how plants grow in various conditions. And then over here, um, this talks about what are they going to be doing in the classroom to, address, to prove that they are able to address these outcomes. In other words, the, the behavior that you want them to create it has been successful. Well, take a look. We've been talking about differentiating learning and teaching, uh, UDL. We've gotten into the components of instructional design. We took a look and tour of, of the Iowa Corps. Uh, we mentioned the ISTE standards and the TPAC. And finally, we, we discussed how you're going to be designing your thematic unit activities. And it's just, it was an introduction. It's, um, you'll, be, you'll be learning quite a bit about it later on. Well, it looks like we're going to have a great week ahead of us. So you take care. And remember, go get them. You shall. Bye. Thanks.